Welcome back to the Speed Sport Podcast Studios. You're listening to Fast Car to NASCAR with Mike Wallace. My name is Jeff Kent. We're on the line with Richard Childress, the one and only. And once again, here's Mike Wallace. Well, Richard, so far, you, we, we know you're uh, taking time out of your day and you got a hectic schedule, so we're going to try to speed this up more than we normally would. So after that 74 error, and let's get to the point of where you got involved as a car owner. T- tell us how that started and how you started. The fame of bringing Dale Earnhardt on board. How did that get started? You know, that's a whole nother chapter in the book for sure. But uh, I want the copyrights to the book since we're talking about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 We. Uh, I guess I. I could see the sport changing, Mike, just like it's changing today. Uh, in the last four or five years, it's really changed. I could see. I've been very fortunate in life to to be able to see some things maybe before they happen. And I could see when MC Anderson come into it, Warner Hodgson, Osterlin, all these big money car owners started coming in and I could run in my top 10. I'd get my top 10s out of it and, uh, you know, making a little money, doing pretty well. And then it kind of kept moving me back. Okay. You're out of the top 10. Now you run the top 15. Pretty soon I was borderline 15th and falling back because I didn't have the money that it took to race with, you know, Junior Johnson, Bud Moore, all of these people. We had four big names at that time. That was there. You had Junior, Bud Moore, uh, Petties, and uh, K and K, and those were your big four. There was one or two more. The Wood Brothers would come in and race maybe 20 races, but. Uh, you know, I could see me sliding back, and I said, man, i got to do something. So my friends at R.J. Reynolds, I kept telling a bunch of them, Wes B. Roth, Ralph C. Graves, T. Wayne, all them guys, said, man, i got to get out of this thing. i got to do something. I, if I don't, I'm going to be doing something else in life because I can't keep racing like this is. Because I wasn't having as much fun running where I was as I was when you could get them top ten runs. And... uh so I ended up uh, letting them know that. Well, they came to me and said, hey, would you talk to Dale Earnhardt? You said you wanted to get out of the car. I said, yeah, but I said, uh, I'm not really sure that I want to get You know, it was a hard decision, you know, at the time to quit racing. I wasn't ready. I was only 30-some years old. And I said, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. So, uh in the meantime, I uh, we run Dale 10 races, so we met at the downtowner in Anniston, Alabama, and put our deal together that night. Before that, I met with Junior Johnson over at the six-day motel or wherever it is there, and uh, as you get off the interstate, you probably know where I'm talking. You might have stayed there, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> probably have. <laughs> but uh, I met with Junior, and he said, look, he said, because I was – good friends with junior throughout the years. And he, uh, he said, look, there's a lot of good race drivers out here, but there's no good, you know, future car owners coming that, that knows the sport. we got people coming in that's buying their way in. He said, you'd probably do good. So I took his advice, went and met with him. Dale and I, we put the deal together for 10 races in 1981. And, uh, man, it felt like somebody cut my arms off when I couldn't run that race at first race. I bet. And put Dale in it, and uh, we ran 10 races, and, man, we knew we had something special. We we were hunting buddies. We knew an old guy up here. We, we'd we done some hunting, and I knew Dale before that and uh, put our deal together, and we knew we had something special. Both of us knew it. We, You know, we both lost our dads, and our moms were about alike. It was just so much in common with both of us. And we built a a friendship that beyond just being able to work together, we built a close friendship. And so then I carried, uh, uh, at the end of 81, I carried Greg Sachs to Daytona to start the 82 season with. And uh, it didn't work good. He wrecked the car, and then we put Ricky Rudd in it. Ralph Seagraves brought Ricky Rudd. Said Piedmont Airlines wants a young and up and coming driver. I said, "Hell, that's me." No, they want a <laughs> young up and coming driver. So I hired Ricky Rudd to run eighty two and eighty three for us. Now, and, R- uh, Richard, in that time, Ralph Seagraves, who you talk about, 
I never met the man, but he was the guy behind the RJR brand, right, in racing, the Winston brand. Was he was that his position when he was talking to you about bringing yeah, Rudd he, on board? He ran the whole RGR, RJ Reynolds uh, sports. He, I mean, he was the man. He's the one that brought Winston to NASCAR. Uh, Junior knew Ralph good, and they put that deal together and brought it to uh, uh, brought it to NASCAR. The Winston Series is Ralph Seagraves is who brought it there. Okay, so right. And so, uh, so Ralph wanted you to have Ricky Rudd, and you, so yeah. So we ran Ricky for two years, and the whole time, Dale and I were hunting buddies, and we were going to South Carolina hunting together and talking always talking about how we wanted to get back together sometime. And it's so much more to that story. I ain't even going to, I'm going to save that for the book someday, but we had somebody else to get us, try to get us to drive for them. And we had a big sponsor lined up. And so I had Wrangler, uh, you know, so we took Wrangler and went over there. Junior Johnson's the one that said, Hey, Wrangler wants to put, uh, you and Dale back together. And Ralph, so uh, we ended up putting Wrangler and Dale and myself together. Went over to Bob O'Deer's home and put that deal together that night. And he ended up putting Ricky in Bud Moore's car, and uh, and uh, with Wrangler on it. So Wrangler had two two cars that year in '84, '85, and then. Uh, so Dale drove for us. We won our first race together in 84. But I won a race with, we won a race with Ricky Rudd in Texas, a USAC race, because Ricky was always, you know, he had a deal. I don't know if I ever win. We got into a big round at Martin's where we thought we was going to win it, and he got in a big deal with uh, Joe Rutman up there. And anyway, I said, come on, we're going to go to Texas. We went down there, sat on the pole, won the race said see you can win races it was good ricky rudd was really good for rcr and for ricky rudd because it built both of us up and built our confidence up so put dale in there in 84 and the rest of it with dale was history all the way up until 2001 february 18th February 18th. I remember that day well, and uh the, the world does but so let's fast forward after dale earnhardt what was the next progression? I mean, that had to, uh, I mean, for your friendship, your business relationship, all the ties you had together, that had to kind of subdue it a little bit. But as a businessman, you had to keep going. Yeah, well, we, uh, you know, that night after that, I went back and uh, talked to my wife. And I said, you know, we're going to sell this thing as soon as I get back home. I'm, I'm going to get out of it. I'm out of racing. Lost some best friend. We lost. Dale was our franchise for RCR. Uh, so we, uh, you know, it, it was a tough deal. You know, it just, it, it was a burden. It still bothers me today, even mm-hmm. thinking about it. But uh, so we were at Bill France Jr.'s house over there, and we was waiting. We was going to fly back with a body that night with Teresa and Judy and myself. And Mike Hilton was with us. And we, uh, I was out there on Bill's dock out there and just out there thinking by myself. I spent an hour or two out there just thinking. And I thought about this big hunting uh, we call it the Great Horse Wreck. Now, if y'all need to take a break, holler at me. Yes, but sir. so we, we uh, got to think about that Great Horse Wreck and Dale. You know, I fell off the mountain, the horse. It's a long story. Anyway, we get back to camp that night, and I said, Dale, you know, if I hadn't have made it off this mountain today, you'd have had to went on and race next weekend. We were on the way to Phoenix. He and I were, and we were hunting. And I said, uh, if I hadn't have made it off this mountain, you'd have had to went on and go and race at Phoenix. He said, well, if it ever happens to me, he said, you got to go and race. Hmm. So it hit me like a ton of bricks standing out there. Stood there for a few minutes, emotional, and I went uh, back inside. I called Bobby Hutchins. I said, Bobby, we're going to Rockingham. Paint the car white. Call NASCAR. Get the lowest number you can and uh, be at the shop tonight. Have Kevin Harvick there 
I'm going to put Kevin Harvick in the car if he wants to drive it. I knew he did because we was going to put him in another car the next year. So uh, that's how all that went down. If it hadn't have been for the great horse wreck, I might not be here today. So I got to thinking what Dale told me, and we went to Rockingham Racing. Well, you guys had a premonition, the great horse wreck. I know yeah. we'll have to get to that at some no other kidding. time. But, uh, yeah. wow. And you mentioned Bobby Hutchins. I ran into Bobby a week ago at a gas station. What a, what a small <laughs> world. But, yeah. Uh, so you, you continued. You took uh, Kevin Harvick on to Rockingham. And yep. then then you, was it a week later, two weeks later, you guys shocked the world and you won Atlanta? Yes, three weeks later. we On the third race it was, I think, that year. Uh, we had Daytona, Rockingham, and Atlanta, and we go down there and win, win Atlanta. Just like, it's almost scary. If you're in our museum up here and watch the race when Dale won that race and beat uh, uh, Bobby Labonte by just a barely nose, and then Kevin Harvick comes right back with one of Dale's cars the next year and beats Jeff Gordon by just a nose. Uh, it's almost scary to see how both of those came down the same way. But we did that. We won the race. And I think that was a healing point. We had a lot of healing points that year for the fans and us as well. Mm -hmm. Dale winning that race. Dale Jr. winning. Uh, Steve Park uh, winning. And, you know, just so much stuff went down. Dale Jr. won Daytona in July. So many things was little healing moments. You, a lot of people still suffer from the loss of Dale, but those were healing moments at the time when we needed them. Oh, that's inspiring. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. So I'm going to fast forward because I know you're on a time crunch here. You come to 2022, we, we have a brand new, you know, your, your career is documented from that point. Everybody knows how, how great RCR was at that point. So you, we come to 2022, and I'd like to get your opinion on what I call the current status of NASCAR racing. Not in-depth, just a quick overview, because earlier in the show you'd mentioned racing was changing back years ago, and it's changing today. When when this whole new car design that come about, did that fit Richard Childress Racing? Did you like what you were seeing, or was you didn't know what was, was taking place, but you were going to just stay part of it? Yeah, I, could, I knew it was coming from – five years ago, not this exact piece, but I knew that there was going to be change coming and some pretty serious change. And, you know, we, we've got a pretty good size operation here from fabrication to engines to a lot of different things. <clears throat> and I started diversifying back probably four years ago, doing military work and a lot of other outside work. And cause I could see the change coming and sure enough, when it came, if we hadn't, we'd have had to lay a lot of people off in our fabrication shop in a lot of areas because now we're having to buy the stuff. So this whole car is a different change. But the biggest change in this whole car is is so engineer-driven. NASCAR has done a great job so far of keeping the rules and keeping everybody pretty much in track. But the thing is so engineer-driven every component everything about the car and now you know before you know it may take a hundred thousandths to make a difference now 20 and 30 thousandths is making a difference in this car mm. and all the different moves you make in it one thing will make react to the other end of the car so you got to have the right engineering group working with you gotcha so in in the long run of things do you think this new car, because I've heard from various owners in various conversations and things like that, that, wow, this car was supposed to save us a lot of money, but it, we can't see that yet, and we don't know where we're going to see it. Do you feel that same way, or I know it's kind of on a different track than the story of Richard Childress, but is it good for the sport right now? I well, mean, I think the car puts on a great show. I think there's still, we're still tweaking on it. We've only ran it one year mm -hmm. where we've ran these other cars for years and years. And they, every year we're going to refine it and they're going to get better and better. There were a lot better cars this year at, uh, out than it was last year, uh, out at, uh, the Coliseum because everybody's had a year of work on it. It's only going to get better with time and the teams are only going to get better. But, uh, I think as far as the cost, yes, sir. The cost is, 
nothing compared to where we thought it was going to be. And the savings are not going to be there. Everything's gone up, constantly going up, which everybody knows today. Inflation's hit everything, but it's hit this car harder than any of us had ever expected. Some of the components, we're, we're using them up a lot quicker than we had anticipated. So it, it's expensive, but I think putting on a great show for the fans, at the end of the day, we're in show business. we got to put on a great show every time we go out there. I think this car has a potential to keep putting it on. What do we have, 14, 15 winners last year, something like that? So uh, different winners. So it, that's a sign that this car is working. 